I'm starting this off with something my piano teacher, I take piano lessons for fun, but I've been playing since I was six, kind of um, put forth to me. He said, envision, if you will, a world in which every human being is being seen from the same lens of equality and um, seen as deserving of all human rights. My piano teacher, Eric Stumacher, passionately holds this as the heart of his lifelong work. It may have started when he was a Quaker, when he went to Quaker schools, and um, it progressed a little when he went to Juilliard School of Music and worked teaching um, Af African American children in the, ha in the Harlem area of New York piano lessons. And then it became transparent when he founded Apple Hill Chamber Players and their Playing for Peace initiative, which was a group that got um, warring factions and musicians together to create beautiful music. I'll talk more about that later. This passion is currently um, metamorphosing into his SONAD project, which has a mission to foster freedom and equality in all peoples throughout the worldwide through solo chamber music, orchestral concerts, and through artistic workshops, which inspire profound connections across human divides. He doesn't really have a unique idea here. I think this is the core of cultural diplomacy. I'll argue that it is indisputably necessary at this point, and that it takes on several different forms. I think you'll all agree it's needed now more than ever. And um, I was looking at the, the ICDs, um, <clears throat> some of their background, and they do note that with the deteriorations of social norms for the use of violence, this emphasizes the growing need for greater cultural dialogue, understanding, and trust in order to avoid further escalation. So in the 21st century, we have access to um, new approaches to cultural diplomacy. Schneider emphasizes with the ever increasing capabilities of new technology, there's been a breakdown of traditional boundaries and the practice of two-way cultural engagement has become ever more important. It's here that CD is arguably at its best in its ability to remove the barriers when more traditional forms of diplomacy fail at this task. This paper focuses upon the work of the individual, the individual in creating spaces in which um, CD can do its important work and the role that other individuals, groups, organizations, and governments can play in facilitating these processes. I, I assert that the um, individual's work, especially formal and informal educators, which I believe all of you sitting here are, um, either formally or informally, it has to be recognized, supported, and encouraged for these spaces to form. It's through this support that the potential for human rights for all becomes a reality, and it's insignificantly increased with, with that support. Um, we want to define cultural diplomacy because to each of us it may be a little different. I look at it as something Cummings described it as, quote, the exchange of ideas, information, art, and other aspects of culture among nations and their peoples to foster mutual understanding. Inherent in this definition is the need that to understand that cultural diplomacy is not a one-way street, but is a two-way exchange. We must all reflect upon our position of power or lack thereof and ask ourselves the hard questions when we're engaged in cultural diplomacy, such as, am I holding my values and culture as being better than those with whom I am sharing? We must ask ourselves, am I forcing my culture upon these with whom I'm sharing? Perhaps because of that sense of superiority? Rather, we should be saying, how delightful are our differences? How delightful are our commonalities? And I have so much to learn. How fortunate I am to have these experiences. And I must take what I am learning and use it to help others who haven't been as fortunate as I am to have these experiences and subsequent understandings. The arts can and do play an important, world, uh, an important role 
in these um, works, Transcending Boundaries. Uh, my piano teacher, Eric Stumacher, said that he found that words sometimes got in the way, and he used music because of that. He said that when using words, horror-filled memories come up, um, and they can bring forth blame sometimes with those with whom we are working. When collaborating with Arabs and Israelis in Palestine, or while he was working with Catholics and Protestants during the Troubles in Northern Ireland, he found the act of getting musicians to come together and collaborate to create something beautiful, expressing joys and sorrows of our humanity in one voice through their music, they developed a strong base from which to embark upon the next steps towards deeper understanding. The same can be said of the other arts, of course. When considering the arts, I, I tend to think of them as expressions of the human condition. You can look up and read a bunch of different um, definitions of the arts. I'm going to just mention a couple of them. Brown consider art pieces to be studies as objects within their own right, without regards to the causes for their production, their effects on audience, or even their relation to the rest of the real world. I'm not there. <laughs> um, Marcuse, the philosopher, considers art to be, quote, committed to the perception of the world which alienates individuals from their functional existence and performance in their society, communicating truths uncommunicable in any other language. I love that last part. Well, there are clearly some arguable components in all of these definitions. I use Eager as the most apropos description of art when he talks about it as it aligns with CD. He states that in creating art, consciously or unconsciously, artists are attempting to communicate at a powerful emotional level to those within their own culture. The best work transcends its cultural matrix and speaks directly to our common humanity. This is where the heart of cultural diplomacy lies with its understanding of the role of the arts in exposing the commonalities of our human condition. By recognizing this, the audience draws closer to and hopefully reaches the understanding that all human lives are to be considered equally important and equally deserving of human rights. <clears throat> In this paper, I'm going to kind of broaden the idea of the art and include pedagogy as an art. Pedagogy I refer to as the art of teaching, and several scholars also agree with that, um, Pierce, Snyder, and Taylor, etc. As such, teaching can be a rich area for cultural diplomacy, but it must be conducted in a thoughtful manner which encourages diverse perspectives, creative dialogue, and expansion beyond the cultural constraints of the institutions or the locations where it takes place. We have all heard of cases where teaching has done the exact opposite, but I'm saying we can use it for cultural diplomacy and should use it for that. Um, I currently teach in a small college, a public liberal arts college. Most of the students have, many of them grew up in this pretty rural state of New Hampshire with very limited um, exposure other than through media to other cultures, other individuals. I mean, New Hampshire is 93, 94% white. They, they have a really small viewpoint of the world. So I consider one of my jobs to help them learn more about the world and to help them want to graduate and go on to do things to help in the world. Um, so it's critical that, we, that, it, that I take that on in my work. We must also carefully reflect when we're teaching upon when we're assuming the role as teacher, either formally or informally, there are teachable moments that can occur at the least expected times. Also, we need to humbly recognize that <clears throat> even, in a, even in a formal classroom, 
The role of teacher should be fluid. I have learned so much from my students as they have learned from me. They become teacher of other students in the class as well. Um, Bell Hooks talks about that a lot in her book in 1994. History has shown us that one individual can really have an impact on the viewpoint of a larger group of individual. Many of us find it easier to hold on to the viewpoints of those in our immediate environment. Thich Nhat Hanh, a Buddhist monk who is heavenly, heaven, well that was a nice, he probably has heavenly influence, but he's heavily influenced many critical educators. He warns us not to do this because he says, quote, it would keep us from recognizing the truth even if it was knocking on our door. Instead, we should choose to become individuals that change our understanding, who bring about deeper understanding through collaboration with other cultures and through the arts and through our journey towards a deeper intercultural understanding in our work and helping others join in this trek. This work doesn't have to be carried out by individuals who have unlimited access to funding, but they do need support and they do need a strong work ethic. These are individuals, these are teachers who creatively answer, how can this be done instead of being discouraged about fulfilling a desire <clears throat> to gain access for intercultural exchange? These individuals have, been, have to be taught to ask what if instead of, oh, this isn't possible. These are individuals who are fortunate enough to have others support them, not only monetarily, but also in their day-to-day -day work of their lives. Supporters who <clears throat> expose teachers to possibilities they may not have ever um, considered. Support for these individuals come from many sources. Um, I can talk a little bit about the United States. Um, I know that in the United States, 45% of the support to artists come from governmental support and from private donations. So in the non -for -profit, that's in the non-for-profit art sector. So if you think about that, 55% of the funding that they need to continue their work has to be earned by themselves via performances, ticket sales, and interest that can be earned from some of their, their endowments. Herein lies the need to be creative in funding to find ways in which um, they can foster cultural diversity even when they don't have a lot of funding available. Some folks look at areas outside of the traditional artist grants. Um, there's a Fulbright grant, I think some of you may have heard of it for educators. Um, Senator Fulbright created it in the 1940s with the goal of understanding that, quote, educational exchange can turn nations into people contributing as no other form of communication can to the humanizing of international relations. So Fulbrighters can choose to go to another country and they live there for five to nine months and they can teach, conduct research or do both. And it also provides support for educators from other countries. But you don't have to just be a teacher. You can be an artist and there are several artists that do work and gain funding through this grant program. However, like many other grants, it's very competitive and they require terminal degrees in the field, which is unfortunate because some artists don't have that terminal degree, but they're incredible artists. Some artists rely for funding support through their local community, hosting performances or exhibitions to, rise, to raise money for intercultural dialogues. But if they're trying to do intercultural travel, the monies needed grows significantly, and it often comes from their own pocket, um, which is hard during these times, these economic times. <clears throat> Although not apt to be as effective, alternative means of funding providing intercultural dialogue may need to be developed utilizing technology and the internet. I don't know if you've used crowdfunding, it's not as effective, but that's becoming a way even public school teachers are getting extra iPads so the kids can start to see more of the world through um, writing pleas on Facebook and collecting money that way. Um, 
all of these approaches tend to favor those people who have the cultural capital to know where to look for funding and have the financial standing to be able to engage in years of lessons and education to lead them to their upper skills within the art and the support of their family, friends, and community members who also um, appreciate the art. It's not always the case in the United States. They've really significantly decreased funding to the arts and schools, um, which is, again, making it less available to people who may not have the personal funding to work with it. Um, I can't complain too much, though, because compared to other countries, we may have greater funding, as, uh, even with the diminished funding. So <clears throat> when we return to teaching, so I was going back to teaching as the art form that can encourage cultural diplomacy, we have to make sure we embody it. Such teaching carefully deconstructs the power relations of the formal curriculum. So our governments and our state governments tell us what we're going to teach, and there's power implied in that, and there's cultural artifacts in that that are ignoring some, some of the cultures of those whom we are teaching. It places, <clears throat> we want to make sure that we're exposing areas of privilege, and we want to place, first and foremost, the importance of sharing and respecting voices of different perspectives and finding areas of commonality. It's not easy, and such a teacher frequently encounters resistance from other faculty, from the administration, so we kind of have to be subversive in doing it sometimes, and also from their own students. Um, one of the things that I've found, that I've done with my class, this helps with the students that are a little resistant, is if I'm getting them to read articles or that are really pushing at their own values and making them try to rethink their own values. If I ask them to write something about it, I'll get a bunch of complaining and things like that. Instead, sometimes I have them use collage. And collage is an art form that even if someone says, I can't draw a stick figure, they can do collage, in which they cut out pictures from magazines or from sites on the internet to help with visual means only explain what they got out of the article. Um, through through well-crafted instruction, these collages can be the foundation of intercultural awareness, honing in on the common human experience from the suffering to the joy. Through these beginning journeys, a skilled teacher can implant in his or her students the roots of cultural diplomacy, that is, the important and critical need to seek out mutual understanding with those who seem so very different from us. This work isn't confined to classroom walls. Those of us actively embedded in cultural diplomacy can certainly share our delight with our work and with colleagues, family, and communities. If access to the media is available, parents may start at an early age to expose their children to movies, music, dance, other forms of art from other cultures. They may so serve food for supper from cultures that are different from theirs and compare and contrast cultural artifacts. Access to these forms of cultural exploration must be available and may require some proactive work within the communities to assure that they are. So whether working as a visual artist, a musician, a dancer, an actor, a teacher, or any other art form. The individual is critical in forming those intercultural bonds so necessary in cultural diplomacy. <clears throat> it kind of goes to that idea of dropping a pebble and you don't know who you're reaching. I know when I'm teaching pre-service teachers, my students are going to be teaching generations of students beyond me while I'm dead and gone. <laughs> and so, if you think that way as the individual, starting at the individual, it can really have an impact. It must be our personal mission, our mission as educators, either formal or informal, and our mission as artists, representatives, or government officials in our varied countries to assure that we support, encourage, and fund these initiatives in their numerous forms. We must prioritize this in all our work 
for it's here we can move from the fractious violent confrontation occurring far too often in different cultures towards deeper understanding and appreciations of our similarities and our differences in our human condition. Thank you. Thank you very much you. for this uh, uh, excellent presentation. I would like to invite you for one question and uh, comment. And uh, uh, yeah, thanks a lot. I would like to share also this similar experience. It's uh, very interesting to when you are as a, the, the role of educators is really yes. very very important nowadays. And the power power of knowledge, of right. course, is the bigger one in this right. planet. For sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Question and comments? Okay. Thank you very much. One more time for uh, your presentation.